What's up, everybody? It's Pykel with League of Items, and the LPL bracket is set for the summer playoffs. So, in this video, I'm going to talk about the first round matchups and how I think the brackets are going to play out. Maybe it makes us think about picking some other people to win the championship if they have like a really good uh, path to the finals. I, I doubt it, but it's possible. Um, so, the first phase, and I'm just going to read it off the screen, two King of the Hill single elimination brackets. Winners of each bracket advance to phase two. Phase two is a double elimination bracket. Matches are best of five. And the winner qualifies for the 2021 World Championship. And then they have a separate regional finals uh, to figure out the rest of their seeds. Uh, I'm on Leaguepedia, as per usual. Well, you... Maybe it gets a little too... I guess that should be fine. So, in this in this video, I'm going to go through a couple different things for every matchup. Like, I know my general feelings about every single team. So, like, I'll give, um, like, a gut reaction. I'll go lane by lane. And then I'll do some more analysis, like, with champions. Uh, so, let's just get our first matchup, which is LNG and Sunning. Let's see if they have lines for this. Um, I would assume that LNG is the, f is the f favorite. Sunning is the favorite. That's a little surprising. Um, that's pretty surprising. So right now, LNG is listed at plus 154. Sunning is at 208. Um, let's just go lane by lane and talk through it. Uh, eh. So, we have Ale against Bin. I prefer Bin. We have Tarzan against SFM. I prefer Tarzan. Um... That's fine. Icon against Angel, I think, is pretty even. I I think that most people probably think that Angel is better at this point, but Angel is a pretty champion dependent player and had a good had a good uh, tournament at Worlds. So obviously, people have good memories of Angel. But I think that often leads to people overrating players when they see them go far in a tournament. Huan Feng, who is the true carry of the team. Uh, I think that Huan Feng and An are better than Light and Awandi. So, that's that. Um, let's go into their more recent matches. I might need to get that. Um... I think that let's let's see let's see the most recent stuff. So we're gonna stay everything that's on eleven fourteen. So on patch eleven fourteen, Sunning beat LNG, which is another thing I was gonna take a look at, uh, is the head to head matchups. Uh, Sunning lost to FPX, which is fine. FPX has been playing very well recently. Sunning beat V five, which is expected. They lost to Rare Adam, which is a little bit of a disappointment, and they beat TT, which is expected. LNG. Lost to Sunning, which is fine. Beat LGD, which is okay. Uh, beat Rogue Warriors 2-1, to one, which is probably a disappointment to a lot of people. They feel like they should 2-0 them. LNG against Top Esports. Uh, Top Esports is a good team. Uh, and then LNG against EDG. They lose, they lose to EDG. Not very surprising. Um, so that's okay. Uh, now let's go to the scoreboards. That is weak... Seven day three. Let's look at the head to head. What? I feel like that should have been there. Maybe I'm reading it wrong.
Okay, so this isn't very surprising. Uh, Bin is a very good Camille player. Bin is also a very good Jax player. Uh, so that makes sense to me. S of M plays a million different champions, whatever they think fits a specific meta, which is always very good. Uh, the, oh, LNG ran out their backup bot lane. That's interesting. Um, I don't like the Renekton pick, but it's kind of whatever. Icon against Angel should be fine. I think Icon has been a better fit in the meta recently, but we'll check some more games after this. Um... Suning is a, a pretty funny team because they are very centered on Huanfeng, but instead of it being like, oh, we have a very good AD carry, let's play late game all the time, they generally play for like early and mid game. So like Suning and Huanfeng can pick things like uh, Aphelios, Jinx, Ezreal, but they're more likely to play like Varus, Jin, Ziggs. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw them play like an Ash. Or something like that. Just like a, a champion that gives them more of an ability to win the laning phase and then snowball that into a like a um, an unassailable advantage. Um, so that's a little interesting. The fact that it the fact that their LNG's backup bot lane was in there does have a pretty big impact on this. Uh, so I'm not sure how much we can really take away from that. Let's see what other matches we can see. LNG. So they had Makuya playing for some reason. They're just going back and forth with some of these players. Ali is back in. So we see a Gwen, which is something you want to see. Wanfeng. Yeah, like, this is what I'm talking about. So this is this is something that I could see happening in this matchup. Would be LNG playing around light, get, getting Aphelios, getting Ezreal. Let's see what the... Actually, I can do it here. Um, Where else could I do that? I'll do it oh, right there. Um, so I'm I'm not gonna like change how this looks. It's just looking at the different champions that they they have when they played against each other. Xin Zhao is getting banned a lot against Suning, which means there's gonna be some additional draft pressure. So blue banning Ziggs. So they don't want to deal with Ziggs. Teams don't want Sunning to get Ziggs, is what I mean. This is not the easiest thing to read. <laughs> Maybe I should go to this. I, I think that... I'm surprised it's plus 154. Like, it's... I could see them drafting into, like, Suning playing for early mid-game compositions, which I prefer in general right now, because I think it is possible for teams, especially when they have a, a skill gap, to, um, to pl actually get a big enough lead to matter. And I think Suning is, is good enough. But I think at 154, I think that's just not... That's just not a good number um so in this I think we should no we should go with light and one foam Oh, I should have clicked on the champions. That's what I should have clicked. So Varus, 9 and 4 on Varus. Varus is going to be a contested pick. I also wouldn't really expect um, 
Sunning to give that away, so that'll be a contested pick. They're not very good at running the Ophelios. Haven't seen much Zaya recently, I don't think. Fourteen and four on Kaisa. I don't think we're gonna see much Kaisa unless we're getting like first pick eighty carries um, on blue side from LNG. Really good at playing the Jinx, the Ophelios games. That's interesting. I, I wonder what matches these are in. I'm not gonna spend too much more time on this one. I I I do prefer Sunning as a team. I I like the talent of Sunning more, and people who have been like watching my channel for a long time probably expect that to be the case um i do i do think lng at plus 154 is pretty good though um i could see i could see tarzan i could see tarzan outplaying s of m for an entire series um that really wouldn't be that surprising to me um so i, I would want my official pick to be sunning but i don't like them at plus two whatever it was so for value on the money line, I'd probably say it's LNG. And I think that's probably what they're trying to get you to do. They probably would prefer you to bet on LNG at this point. They probably have a lot more Sunning uh, future money. Um, okay, so that's enough for that matchup. Uh, we'll just run through the top side, and then we'll go through the bot side as well. Uh, top Esports against Sunning. So Top Esports and Sunning played each other in the semifinals um, at Worlds. And Sunning pulled off a pretty great uh, upset. Top Esports has been a big disappointment this year. Everybody has huge expectations for them. So that's kind of what we're playing with right now. Top Esports beat Rogue Warriors, lost to Invictus Gaming, beat LNG, lost to Up, beat OMG, and beat World Elite. With World Elite, Missing had to go to the hospital today for something, so that's why, uh, that's part of the reason why I think this matchup was pretty one-sided. Um, I, I'm a huge Sunning fan, but I think this is a spot where Top Esports is just too undervalued. Um, there isn't a line out for this game yet, but I don't think that... I don't think that there's a way for them to um, hang a number for top esports that makes me want to bet on Sunning. Uh, if we look at every position, uh, three six nine against Bin. I think the public consensus on three six nine is probably lower than it's ever been. Uh, with Bin, Bin hasn't had a great split, but I think people still understand that he's a carry player. S of M against Karsa. Karsa's the better player. Um, but S of, like that's a spot where S of M could have a couple pocket picks to deal with Karsa. And every once in a while, you'll get Karsa going into like some weird tank jungle picks that don't really line up with what Top Esports needs him to do. Uh, Knight is much better than Angel, in my opinion. Um, again, if there is some kind of mid matchup that Knight can dominate, or that Angel can like hold his own and, and win the lane against Knight, I think that would be... Uh, like a potential soft spot in the projections for this matchup, but that's basically it. I think that Juan Fung is just better than Jackie Love. That might be controversial, but I think it's it's pretty obvious to me. Uh, and then on against Zhuo or Yu Yanja, I'm not sure who's going to be playing. Uh, I don't really care uh, much for which support is playing. The only thing that could p potentially do is change the support matchups, like, champion-wise, but that's not going to do much for me. There's not much... There's not much in this one. I... Th I think that I I would bet on... I, I, th I think that Top Esports just beats Sunning in this spot. There are ways for Sunning to win the match, like they showed at Worlds, but it's going to be really difficult for me to convince myself that, uh, that Sunning is going to win right now. I think that Top Esports is just the better team long-term. 
I think that Sunning, if they had a different mid laner, I'd probably be more comfortable, but I'm just really not a huge Angel fan. Um, which is unfortunate. Like, I do, I, I like Sunning a lot, but I'm going to go with Top Esports in that one. So then it'd be Top Esports against RNG. So if you go Sh Xiao Hu is better than 369, whoever they run out in top lane doesn't really matter. Karsa is a better player than Wei. Knight is a better player than Kryon. Jackie Love and Zhuo against Gala and Ming. I think I think this is an interesting spot because Gala is o like very overrated player right now. And then Jackie Love is, is historically overrated as well. Uh, but I think that they're about the same, which maybe that is more of like a Gala getting a bump from recent performances and stuff like that. My issue with Gala is that I feel like they they were very good in the Kai'Sa meta, but not as good in the other metas, which is strange because Gala should be the kind of player that can play a bunch of utility AD carries and then let the rest of the team carry. That That's how they should be playing this, in my opinion. So yeah, you see 28 and 11 there. Uh, a lot of these stats are going to look amazing because they've just been winning <laughs> uh, so much uh, as RNG. Uh, Tristana's interesting. You you basically just want to you want to draft. RNG should be drafting to attack Jackie Love. That's really all you have to do. Jack, well, not all you have to do. Jackie Love is like a pocket passer in the NFL. Like, you just want to pressure them as much as possible and force them into making mistakes. So that's really how I think RNG will would win this matchup. With that being said, I think I still prefer Top Esports as an underdog here. Because right now, even though, RN, even though RNG has not looked as good as people expected them to, I think that the perception of RNG is still overinflated. So for that reason, I would still take top esports here. Uh, I think I just prefer them long-term talent-wise. Uh, next up, we would have FPX against top esports. I'm not sh I, I think that they subbed out Nogari for Shaolau Hu, but I don't think that's going to, to continue on. Um, Nogari is a better player than 369 but 369 there's definitely matchups where they could win a lane against Nogari and people would be pretty surprised I think even though you know every player kind of has that opportunity uh Tian against Karsa I prefer Karsa Doonby against Knight I prefer not I, I prefer Doonby I think that Doonby is the best mid laner in uh in China and maybe the world Probably, eh, maybe the world. Probably the world. One of those. Uh, and then we have LWX and Crisp against Jackie Love and Zhuo or Yu Yanja. I don't like either bot lane, really. I think that top esports, generally, you want to be able to get that advantage in the jungle and mid lane. I think that this would have to come down to Karsa playing much better than Tian. Um, and not losing it in the draft because F FPX has so many different champions they can kind of pull out of nowhere because of B. So it should be a very interesting matchup. It's obviously getting much more difficult to um, to know what the money lines are going to look like because if Top Esports goes out there and stomps two or three opponents in a row coming into their matchup with FPX, oh, if they win if they win back to back matches against relatively good competition. Maybe people start thinking, like, you know, is top esports just, like, playing too well right now? Then maybe at that point, FPX would be undervalued. Um, that's a tough one. My gut is kind of saying to pick top esports there. Um, I'm not sure if we're changing the patches at all. I think if, if I had to pick, I would. I'm, I think that I'm going to like Top Esports at whatever number they list against FPX. 
Um, I know I'd probably be picking another them to win as an underdog again. And maybe at that point, after beating RNG, they would be like too close of an underdog to even really want to bet on them. But that's basically how I see that going. Um, I know we're pretty far out, but that's kind of what I think for the top half of the bracket. World Elite against OMG. So we have World Elite. And OMG has the 10th seed. So Breathe is better than New. Beishang is better than Aki. Cream is probably better than Shanks. I think that Cream has had a really good split. And then we have Abel and Cold against Elk and Missing. I think that Elk and Missing are the better side. I was... I think in my last video, I was saying that I think, like, OMG, depending on their first round matchup, could actually be somewhat surprising and be, uh, like, an upset alert. But I don't see them beating World Elite. I like World Elite a lot. Um, obviously, if the missing stuff ends up having them miss some matches, then that's pretty concerning um, from, like, a consistency perspective. Like, are they going to be able to bring in a support that... Uh, like, can instantly pick up the pieces. Let's actually take a look at who they played today. Oh. Did Missing play? What? What? I don't understand what happened here. That's actually funny that Mole came in as a support. If Mole is the support, I think I would like that even better. I think that would be very cool to watch uh, World Elite make a run through the playoffs because Mole is playing like insane champions as a support. They did that when when, v, when they were playing on V5 and V5 was really bad. Mole would go between support and mid lane, which is pretty cool. Um, but not really much to take into consideration there. So I think that one's an easy one. I'm just going to be on World Elite. And I know everybody's going to be on World Elite. Um, at plus 231. I don't really like the plus 231. If you can get plus one and a half somewhere at a plus, at a plus number, I think that'd be interesting. But that's about it. What's Cam Champ doing out here? I need Cam Champ to make some birdies. It's kind of just breaking my heart right now. He went bogey bogey. Thank you, Cam Champ, for nothing. Let's see if he turns it around. Um, okay, so then it'd be World Elite against BLG. And I think at one point people were asking in Discord, you know, what other teams should we think about getting exposure to um, for, like, futures bets. And I was kind of, like, telling people to hold off a little bit because of the bracket like you could get into a spot where a lot of the teams that we like are all facing off against one another and that's kind of happening um so world elite against blg uh bu bu against breathe breathe is better than bu bu but i think that i don't give bu bu enough respect probably um i think that beishong is better than weiwei I think that Zika is better than Shanks. I think that Aiming and PP God are even with Elk and Missing. So this is another spot which sucks for me because I like both of these teams a lot. And whichever team comes from, from this portion of the bracket is has a good chance to make a run. I think that my head... My heart is saying Billy Billy Gaming. My head is saying World Elite. So I'll pick World Elite in that spot. Uh, World Elite against Rare Atom. I think that Breathe is much better than Cube. And for this one, I think we should actually look at a scoreboard. So let's go to... Rare Atom against World Elite. Rare Atom, World Elite. Nope. 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 There we go. Week three. Day six. So 
so world elite and rare Adam. I'm I'm like I'm low on rare Adam in general. I don't like their team very much, and maybe that's just a blind spot for me. But I can't I can't change that opinion at this point from a talent perspective. I think that breathe is better than cube. This is a not a great matchup. Um, it, well, it can go sideways pretty easy if you get a good early game out of uh, rare Adam's team comp here. I think Beishong is better than Leon. Mole was starting here, so that's not really relevant. And then that's a bad matchup for World Elite down here. Then we have this uh, another bad matchup for World Elite, but they were able to win. And then... This is about when Mole was benched as well. Akali's a good champion. Um, okay, so... That is a little concerning for me. World Elite... World Elite's bot lane champion pools and their willingness to pick Ezreal into bad matchups is kind of scary. Let's see what they did today. So, we had a red side. Well, that wasn't... They went zigs and zigs. So, I don't love that. Then they went Ezreal, Ezreal against RNG and lost both of those matches. Or both of those games, sorry. Uh, they had a Callista game that they won. Ezreal game that they won. Ezreal game that they won. So if they're going to con constantly pick Ezreal, then they need to make sure that they're banning out Varus. Because if you're going... Ezreal into Varus all the time, you have the opportunity to outscale them, but you also make it a very difficult early game to deal with. Uh, so that scares me. I have to pick World Elite here. Um, and again, it's because I think Breathe is better than Cube, I think Beishong is better than Leon. I think that Fofo is probably better than Shanks. I'm pretty low on Fofo relative to everybody else, but maybe that's, again, just me being biased. And then Elk and Missing against iBoy and Hong. I think Elk and Missing are just better than iBoy and Hong, but again, if you get into drafts that are, like, difficult to execute, then I could see World Elite just giving away the, the match in the drafting phase. So I'll be actively rooting for World Elite, and I know that that is probably a spot that... You would never be able to convince me to pick Rare Adam, which is funny, but it's true. Uh, and then EDG against World Elite. So let's see the last time that they played. World Elite. World Elite. World Elite 2-0 over EDG. That is week 7, 1, 2... Alright, so we had Breathe I mean, it's a pretty convincing win. Oh, this is when they started Clear Love the first game, so that's that's probably not great. That's kind of They went Clear Love and Junja instead of Jai Jai. So you have to kind of throw this one out in my opinion. I do think Breathe is better than Flandre. I think that ba Beishong is better than Clear Love, better than Junja, and I think they're better than Jai Jai as well. 
Scout is obviously better than Shanks. Um, Viper and Mako are just as good, if not better, than Elk and Missing. I think a lot of people, because of the records, will just say outright that Viper and Mako are better. I know that Viper has had a lot of, like, really amazing splits um, between the LCK and the LPL. But I think Elk is... I guess you'd have to say that Elk is just as good as Viper. Um, from a from a talent perspective, I think that's accurate. So it's another spot where I, I, I respect both teams enough to say that it's probably going to come, ta- come down to draft and game plan, which if it is going to come down to draft and game plan, I would just say, like, throw money on the dog because it's probably closer to 50-50 than it would, th- than it would seem. So then, in that scenario, we would have FPX against Top Esports and EDG against um, World Elite with World Elite making this gigantic run. Um, so I think that's as far as I could really go from here. Like, I, I don't know how it would get reseeded into the next spot. I guess it would be winner, winner, loser, loser. So it would be Top Esports against World Elite against FPX EDG. Um, if FPX and EDG played each other again, I'd probably go FPX. So then it'd be FPX against the loser of Top Esports World Elite. I think you could say pretty easy that Top Esports is going to beat World Elite most of the time in that spot. So then it would be World Elite against FPX. Wait, what did I say? FPX against Top Esports. Top Esports wins. EDG against World Elite. Pick the upset. Um, and then EDG against FPX. Nogri against Flandre. This kind of matchup dependent. Jai Jai against Tian, I prefer Jai Jai. Scout against Doom B, I prefer Doom B. And then LWX and Crisp against Viper Mako, I prefer Viper Mako. So I think I'd probably pick FPX. Uh, I don't even I don't even know. That's a that's a tough one. So I guess that's where I would have to stop. I, I would really need to put a lot more time into thinking about that one. Um, but I think I think top esports. Uh, would I be surprised if they crashed out against a team like Sunning, would or if they were just overwhelmed by RNG or FPX? No, I wouldn't be surprised. But I just think that the top esports we should expect to see is going to be more similar to the one from like last year when they were a good team. I just think they're too talented um, to be thought of as true underdogs in a lot of these matchups. Um, and for that reason, I'm kind of, you know, expecting them to make a big run. I think Top Esports and World Elite will both make big runs. I think Sony has a chance to make a run in the playoffs. It'd be a little tough. If BLG beats World Elite, I would st- I would probably also pick BLG to beat Rare Adam. So I think BLG, World Elite, Sony, and Top Esports are, are four very interesting teams to be this low in the bracket. Um, but that's basically it. So... I hope that was helpful for you guys out there, just to give you a little bit of a, a post-season primer. Uh, this is like the most fun part of the year when you get all these playoff matchups, because when you have teams playing a bunch of games against one another and the mel- the metas are evolving. I know in, in China it's a little bit more common because they're always playing best of threes, but when everybody in the world is playing, you know, several games against their opponent in the playoffs, you see things kind of develop faster in the meta because everyone kind of pays attention to everyone um but that's it so thanks for watching and i'll talk to you later